Hello everyone, welcome back to the Indie Geek Guide channel. Today we are watching Scrooged. Never seen Scrooged before. I've seen little bits of it, but never in the right order. And I've never seen the whole thing beginning to end before. All I know is Bill Murray's in it. It's a play on A Christmas Carol, the original tale, but 80s -ified. <laughs> So my expectation is we're going to get, you know, a very 80s version of Scrooge, the character. So it's going to be like a Wall Street guy or a big business guy learning the value of Christmas uh, through spirits and all, you know, the traditional Christmas Carol story with Ebenezer Scrooge, but with the 80s twist. So I'm hopeful that there's going to be, you know, uh, kind of like some 80s effects to show off all the paranormally ghost stuff, because I like that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, Bill Murray's great. Uh, I hope to see him on fine form. I imagine he is, because he usually is, so that will be fun. But other than that, really no other expectation. Don't really know what we're actually going to be getting other than some sort of version of A Christmas Carol, and that's about it. But before we jump into the movie, please remember to hit the thumbs up button if you do enjoy the reaction or the review that happens afterwards. And remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos, including the last Christmas movie next week. Uh, and I think that's going to be one that people are going to enjoy. Uh, <laughs> I've Everyone's going to be like, I cannot believe you've never seen that. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. There's also a Discord server down in the description down below. You can click the link and you can go hang out with one another, talk about movies, video games, all that good stuff. You can even make movie recommendations over there for me to make a list of so uh, I know which potential movies I could do in the future. All that good stuff. So please do make sure you check out that as well and help build a community here for this channel. But that's it. Let's jump into Scrooged with Bill Murray and see what this one is all about. I'm getting a very Tim Burton-esque vibe from all this. <laughs> the North Pole? Oh, what the hell is this? <laughs> I wasn't expecting this at all. We're actually doing elves in the workshop. What's going on? What the hell is going on? Um, the North Pole is under attack by aliens. This seems like... What the... <laughs> what the hell is happening? Santa's got an assault rifle. Slee Majors! The six million dollar band! What the... <laughs> And only Lee Majors can stop them. But tonight, the reindeer are <laughs> Okay, that explains so much. <laughs> I was so confused. I'd watch that movie. Let's watch that movie. Can we watch it? Show me the Scrooge promo. Okay, so he's in charge of a TV network, I take it. Not quite a Wall Street guy, but... Charles Dickens' immortal Christmas classic, Scrooge. Hosted by Sir John Houseman, bah, Scrooge. Humbug. It will touch your every. <laughs> the the guy voicing over the advert. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Oh, gosh, does that suck? <laughs> it did. It really did suck. That was a bad trailer. We have spent forty million dollars on a live TV show. You guys have got an ad with America's favorite old fart reading a book in front of a <laughs> fireplace. <laughs> This whole scene has given me, like, vibes of, like, Dr. Evil. <laughs> like, he's just gonna throw one of these people into a fire pit or some shit. International terrorism. Oh my god. Don't miss Charles Dickens' immortal classic, Scrooge. <laughs> That's some 80s Scrooge right there. I'm in. I'll watch it. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Well, you can't show that commercial. If you run that, you're gonna... You're gonna frighten people. We don't want to scare the dickens out of people. Merry Christmas, Miss Cooley. The dickens out of people. Nobody gets it. About <laughs> <laughs> just Bill Murray breaking character there for a moment. <laughs> Clean out his desk and toss him out of the building. Oh, he's fired? You know. Oh, hi, fellas. Thanks a lot and Merry Christmas. This poor guy. This poor guy. <laughs> Have you any idea how many cats there are in this country? I don't have those, no. 27 million. Do you know how many dogs? 48 million. I have here a study from Hampstead University which shows us that cats and dogs are beginning to watch television. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, where is this going? <laughs> they could be 
become steady viewers. Programming for cats. I thought, I thought Bill Murray's character was nuts. He's, he's like a gone full alcoholic already. It's been literally two hours. Oh my god, he is having the worst day. Oh my god. It's probably for the best of that smash, let's be real. Probably for the best. Who's there? Spooky Christmas ghosts. Grace! Grace! Yeah, that was totally gonna work. <laughs> the revolver against the earthquake attacking your door. Help yourself. He's like, what? <laughs> If you don't change your ways, you're gonna wind up doomed, just as I am. Looks like a good future, Bill Murray. I, I mean, go for it. You get to be a immortal golf player. <laughs> you are going to be visited by three ghosts. Here we go. I could squeeze you in for a breakfast. <laughs> what the hell? What the? <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Well, that sucks. It's just fucking with him, man. It's just like, either you do this quietly or I scare the shit out of you and you endure it. All right. <laughs> I really need to talk to you right now. I Something terrible has happened. Or maybe not. I don't know. But I... <laughs> Whatever, I have to talk to you no matter what, it's urgent. Have you seen this morning's paper, Frank? Oh, who's that? She's pretty. <laughs> Dead, Frank. Apparently this 80-year-old grandmother was watching your Scrooge promo last night and she just, she just keeled over. I knew that, Edward. You can't buy publicity like this. Ah! He's so happy about killing an old woman. <laughs> you, you can just go. Watch out. Ah! <laughs> Jesus. There's some silly ass moments in this movie. <laughs> but it's great. It's great. God, you look different. Well, it's been a while. There's someone he actually likes. Well, maybe you'll answer some questions downtown, huh, my friend? What the hell is this? going on? This is my little boy. All right, you beat him. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Are we going to discover why he's so angry? Is that the journey we're on for? You are going to be visited by three ghosts. Expect the first one tomorrow. Frank, I really... A lot of men in your position would see me as a threat. That's only natural, but... We'll <laughs> hasn't even seen a ghost yet, and he's freaking out. <laughs> well, that broke the tension. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god, god. Ah! what the hell is B going on? B Bobby, look! Ah! Look! Ah! Oh, what has a man burning got to do with anything? <laughs> it's the ghost of Christmas fire! <laughs> that, had, that had to be a mistake they left in, there's no way. There's no way that was real, like, intended for the take. <laughs> I'm the ghost. <laughs> there he is. And he's a cabbie. <laughs> Going back in time. This is no DeLorean. You mean well, are <laughs> 955 as if. <laughs> I get it. You're taking me back in time to show me my mother and father, and I'm supposed to get all goosey and blubbery. Let's get this over with. <laughs> what a troll. 
<laughs> Merry Christmas. A choo-choo train? No, it's five pounds of veal. <laughs> but Daddy, I have Santa for choo-choo. Well, then go out and get a job and buy a choo-choo. I think the train would probably be cheaper than all the meat, wouldn't it? I suppose he is a butcher, though, so he just kind of gets it, so... Surely you could sell the meat, then buy the train. Merry Christmas to you, Mama. He's breaking down. He's breaking down in Bill Murray fashion. I bet he's trolling. Oh, no, he's actually crying. Four-year-old kid receives what in today's marketplace is a 40 or $50 piece of milk-fed veal. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Take me to my office. Gladly. <laughs> 1968, baby. You're not leaving, are you? You want to go get some Chinese food? Oh, wow, no. You're not supposed to eat that stuff. They found out that they're cutting up the alley cans and using the chopped suey. You moron, get back there! I don't believe this. <laughs> what an idiot I am! It's amazing how I didn't expect him to be, like, so... Like, quick to be like, I was an idiot. What was I doing? Like, I thought he'd be more resistant to these visions of the past. Say, uh... Would you like to go to a Christmas party that's going on right now? Not really. Neither would I. Would you like to go get some Chinese food? <laughs> right, let's go Claire. Yeah, what is it? I'm in the tub. Well, they were actually together. They were actually together at some point. I thought it was just someone he wished he got with, but never actually did. Is that like the first time he ever had a Christmas present? Is that what this is? Oh my god. He's actually smiling. This is happening like, like it's actually having an effect on him, like I said earlier, way quicker than I expected. We've still got two other ghosts to go yet. Did he play the dog? Was he playing the dog? This is how he crawled his way up the TV ranks. That looks horrible to wear. <laughs> If you could put my needs and the needs of the Frisbee show ahead of your own needs. Frank, look. Maybe we should separate for a while. Blowing it, man. You're blowing it. Still. Okay, you are Claire for Frisbee the dog. <laughs> All right. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you want. And you don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah, it seems pretty real. Don't own that trash. Don't do it. Please. You didn't even land in it properly. That looked painful. What would have happened if I had made different decisions? One good thing about regret is that it's never too late. You can always change if you want to. I don't think he's got to the bridge of change. He's just like, there are some mistakes, but whatever. <laughs> What about the turkeys? And the turkeys are at the A&P? Look it up in the phone book. No, 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 it's I under have, A. No, I and have, if you can't find it, it's under, under A. I have to call them myself. Please, fire these people. Fire them? Yeah, you fire They're them. Volunteers, They're volunteers, dude. Volunteers. Yeah. They do out of the kindness of their hearts. They're volunteers. You, you had her on your side, and then you just went... <laughs> Scrape them off. You want to save somebody? Save yourself. Just when he thought he'd learned something, continues not to learn anything. Which I kind of expected. I thought, like, this is happening way too quick. He's <laughs> he's learning his lesson, like, two ghosts too soon. Why do I have to be molested by these sea urchins? No, buddy, baby. Look, look, right here, buddy. Here's what it says. Street urchins. <laughs> I was going to say, did he just say molested by sea urchins? <laughs> I feel like they might need to recast Scrooge, because, uh, I mean... He needs idiot boards for starters. And who on earth would go, oh, the line must be sea urchins. Ghost coming in. There'd be a ghost coming on in. Hi, Frank. Come on. Come on out and play with me. Okay, well, that's weird. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Keep away from me. Oh. Touch me. Again. I'm going to rip your goddamn wings off. Okay. Oh, you know, I like the rough stuff. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Why? Why is the ghost of present so weird? 
I should have expected as much, given what we started with, with the Ghost of Christmas Past. Oh, look. He did it. What's wrong with him? He hasn't spoken since he saw his father killed five years ago. He just drifted away. Yikes. Oh, come in, Ben. Come in and join the fun. Oh. Ah, ah. Those wings are bent completely out of shape. <laughs> She may be due for a raise. Oh, yeah, probably. Oh, oh, probably. I am. <laughs> We're just torturing him into giving her a raise. He deserves it, to be fair, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> you forgot to open your brother's present. Oh, that doesn't great. look like a towel. What did he get you last year? Uh, I don't remember. I remember. A shower curtain. It was a beautiful <laughs> shower curtain. It was great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's slowly building up his bathroom, okay? He's giving him all the accessories he needs. Okay, what was the name of the boat that took them all to Gilligan's Island? Oh. Oh. This is so easy. Uh, Leave me alone, I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, don't start a fight with the fairy. He'll beat the shit out of you. Oh my god. <laughs> Turning into a wrestling match. Oh, this is nice. Where are we, Trump Tower? <laughs> seen a little bit of the city. <laughs> hey! Hey, down here! Hey, down here! Hey, yo! Oh, well, that aged hey, well. <laughs> Got any last tips for me, huh? Oh, my God! 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 I think that's the guy in the costume, isn't it, for the show? He's in the show, Mr. Cross, as the ghost of Christmas future. That guy is going to be a big star. All right, go watch the show. We're making history in that. <laughs> that definitely looked like it went on his nose. I like the short silhouette. I mean, it's obviously not a real city in the reflection, but it kind of adds to the sort of uh, weirdness of the whole movie. Uh, the unreality crossing with reality and all that good stuff. You see? Indeed. Works like a charm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cats are into it. Viewing figures are going to skyrocket. That's a big hand. That's one big hand. Honey, I'm home. Um, security oh might be needed. Creep. God. That's the real deal. May I? Oh God, Jesus! That's gross. They're really weird looking. Jill, <laughs> will you look at that? Look at those filthy little creatures. Oh, Give me you... A friend of mine said to me, "Scrape them off, Claire. You want to save somebody. Save yourself." Clear. Not just breaking yourself, you're breaking people around you. It's so weird, this whole viewing experience. It's because I know the story. But obviously I've never seen it told like this before. Like, I know what's coming. Every step of the way, but... It's visually so weird and different. <laughs> Why did this have to happen? The set design is interesting. Well, but all of this stuff... Future stuff. Why are you showing me this stuff? I can't do anything, Dad. Why the hell did you bother to show me this stuff? It's not about the fact that you've died, it's about the fact of what you've left after you died. I'm in here! Oh god! That's disturbing. That's disturbing. Ugh! <laughs> no. No. I'm assuming they had like a stuntman's legs like poking up through the top of it whilst Bill Murray's like cuddled up at the top. I was looking for uh, Francis Xavier Cross. That's me! But the great thing is, it's not me! Okay, he's learned his lesson apparently. I'm not sure what lesson he's learned, but he's learned it. No. Camera three, follow the coin, all the way down. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Holy shit, that's Frank Cross. Shut up! Don't touch that dial and stay out of it! When you're being arrested, that's for sure. 
Look, I got a great brother. Look at this guy here. My brother James. Look how cute he was back then. Oh. Oh. Look how smart. You were right about everything, okay? Except the SS Minnow, James. What was the ship that brought them all to Gilligan's Island? The SS Minnow. No point. <laughs> Look, how did he know that? <laughs> <laughs> He's a magician. I don't hear any partying in that boat, Elliot. Great! <laughs> now that was just an innocent window, and you saw what I did to that. Oh my god, that poor traumatized woman. <laughs> it's Christmas Eve, it's not too late, is it? Claire, do you remember? Legs around like this, then this thing here. You circle me, chanting, burning incense before we begin. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I know, I don't know if it's meant to be him, like, finding joy and happiness, or he's just gone completely insane. <laughs> it's such a weird performance, but oddly, just can't stop watching it. The miracle will happen, and then you'll want it to happen again tomorrow. You won't be one of these bastards who says Christmas is once a year, and it's a fraud. It's not. If you like it, and you want it, you'll get greedy for it. I believe in it now. I believe it's going to happen to me now. I'm ready for it. He's really just playing this as utter insanity. <laughs> Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Did I forget something, big man? God blesses everyone. Hell yeah. If nothing, nothing came out of this insanity, at least that little boy spoke again. <laughs> Clear the whole world. Whole world. Uh, Bill Murray looks like he's, he's full on crying. I mean, if I wonder if they got this smog and like and they lived a big day. take or not, or if they did. I obviously they did more than one take, but like I, <laughs> that was one hell of a rant. Oh my god, these things! There's like they look like puppets, but they're so weird. They're so creepy. All right, directed by Richard Donner. Interesting. Danny Elfman did the music, that makes sense. That's probably where the Tim Burton feel was coming from. Alright, that is Scrooge. That was right. <laughs> oh, okay, let's let's talk about this one. Okay, Scrooge starring Bill Murray, directed by Richard Donner. That was interesting. I didn't I didn't look up who directed or anything, so I only found out at the very end there, which I was not expecting Richard Donner's name to come up at the end. So first things first, th it was a weird viewing experience because I obviously, at this point, who doesn't know A Christmas Carol, the, the original story. So it was, I don't know why, I really expected it to maybe like take me by surprise somehow with the story beats. But once it, it, like, it showed its hand pretty early that it was just going to be like a proper retelling of the story, essentially, just a modern modern 80s setting um and then at that point it just became a very strange like viewing experience because like i knew what was going to happen obviously but i'd never seen it visualized in this way before so it was almost like i it was almost like i already knew the spoilers but then it was like a just completely di different like visual input <laughs> to what i was expecting it to be but you know never nevertheless it's well i suppose i have to look at this in terms of how well does it do at retelling the original story? So first things first, the modern setting. Let's start with this. Like, I feel like having it, like him being a, like a TV network president, was basically an idea of how do we meld in the sort of old timey, um, original traditional look of um, of a Christmas Carol and Scrooge and all that. We set it as a TV network, and we can have them doing a production of that story so we can use like this fake set and then we can have our character cross have his traditional like ranting of uh, delirium of like joy and discovering the festive period and what it's all about on a you know traditional christmas carol set as it were i feel like that was really the main driving force for having it in that environment just so we could have that ending essentially but also it does what it did work in terms of uh having a character who was meant to be kind of cutthroat and like i didn't get to the top by being nice to people kind of vibe and all that kind of stuff so it did work in in those terms so um i was expecting like i said like a wall street guy or you know big business guy something along those lines and you know this was kind of that um but 
kind of meta in terms of storytelling and all that kind of stuff, which I enjoyed. I like. I actually prefer this version of how you would do that rather than doing what I thought it was going to do. But other than that, really having it like modern day, present day, as of making the movie, didn't really bear a factor other than sort of showing you know what the cultural difference is between then and then weird how time works but you know what i mean like by updating certain factors of where the class system is how he treats people beneath him and all that kind of stuff obviously all that stuff was brought up to the period of them filming it and uh you know that works in his favor but it's essentially the same stuff it like the modernization element doesn't really factor in too greatly to the overall story which is fine it doesn't have to um i i think that's kind of what threw me off a little bit because i thought that it might i thought they might do something because it being set in a modern time period might sort of alter the story a little bit but by and large it's the same story and then we get to uh the story itself how does it handle the actual story the only thing i feel like parts of it were like barreled through and rushed and i kind of didn't like, at first, I didn't really know what was the lesson that Cross has actually learned. Like, when he sees himself, like, dead in the coffin and burnt, and he knocks himself back into reality, as it were, it was a bit muddled as to, has he has he learned the lesson of, it's not about the fact that he's going to die, but more so what he's going to leave behind when he does die. Because it, at first, it seemed to play off as, he just, you like, I'm alive, I'm alive, I can do stuff while I'm alive, and... I will die eventually, or... You know what I mean? Is it, it, I, like, the lesson he actually learnt at first felt a bit like, I'm not really sure really sure where we're going with this. And then he has this big, epic rant at the end there, and, okay, it, it came off as a little bit, okay, I get where this is now. He is, like, saying, I have learnt that one day I will die. It's about the impact that I leave. I think that was ultimately where the movie was aiming for that, and it got there eventually. It just felt like it might have stumbled a little bit getting to that end point in certain respects and i think that happened because once it got into the meat of you know ghost of christmas past ghost of present ghost of future it just barreled through it like it just was like <laughs> it like like shotgun wedding style pretty much it didn't let me sort of sink in with cross like how was he actually feeling from moment to moment uh, that didn't feel like it had enough time to sort of breathe enough. Like, it just felt like, has he learned his lesson now? No, he hasn't quite learned the lesson yet. But he also looked like he was actually affected by the things he was seeing in his visions of the past, the present, and the future. But I wasn't wholly sure about what he was actually feeling and why. Um, I don't know if that is because... I think it is largely because I say because it was just barreling on through it is really quite quick. And I think that's kind of what hurt that part of it but i will reiterate that i think once you get to the very end i think they just about hit the target that they're aiming for which i suppose is the important thing is that by the time you get to the end of it you you know you reach your conclusion in a way that makes feels like it makes sense which it does just about but i think getting there was a bit of an up and down stumbly road at times one thing i actually really enjoyed and i don't know if i'm going to be alone in this or not is kind of the like the ropey nature of some of it like some of the effects and stuff felt very chewing gum and tape right like it like things were thrown together some of it looked really good like the the ghost of christmas future looked really imposing in that cloak and how tall he was and all that kind of stuff and then the, like the tv monitor face was i think a nice touch and sort of meta for multiple reasons but then <laughs> when he pulls his chest open you got those things inside him like the souls and whatever which are quite obviously like very clearly like latex puppets but yet they looked like creepy in their own right another moment i really liked was the shot of um cross through the sort of window pane of his office and you could see a silhouette in the background but then you could see the city reflected in the glass but it was obviously not like a real city it was obviously like a paper like cardboard cut out of a city that was put up and i don't know if this was by design or not um i'm choosing to think that it was <laughs> Because I think it sort of lended itself into one, the sort of the otherworldly, nothing is quite right here kind of feel once things started getting weirder and weirder. But also the sort of meta text of it being a TV studio exec president and 
they're in a film and sort of crossing those lines a little bit um like i say i don't know if that was intentional but i'm choosing to see it that way <laughs> i think you know the people involved with this were probably smart enough to realize that so i'm going to go with they knew what they were doing <laughs> the opening was fun i liked the opening i think i liked that it sort of played with expectations in a really weird way <laughs> and it was a good way to sort of once the the hand is played and you realize it's a tv show and stuff it sets up um who crosses quite well and you sort of instantly get oh this is who this guy is this is his place in the world this is his vision for what he does and uh, yeah it was a good setup to sort of get us rolling and um but other than you know the storytelling aspect of it it was just funny <laughs> It was just a funny intro to have Santa Claus there with an assault rifle. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Maybe maybe that should be a movie. We we should get Hollywood on that right away. <laughs> Loved um, Bill Murray in this. I mean, who doesn't love Bill Murray? Uh, there were moments in here when I thought, like, he's going to like have a heart attack or something. He is getting so stressed out. And then that rant at the end, like, I was saying, obviously there were cuts and stuff but i do wonder if they took some long takes of him delivering that whole rant and speech and if he improv some of it and just went on and on and they just tried to film as much of it as they could because it certainly felt that way um it certainly felt quite impassioned and like he was just like letting loose and you know i don't know if it was scripted if it was improvised if it was both but it certainly worked by like this emotional release of all this baggage that this character has clearly been carrying around with him because he's an interesting character because in terms of like the christmas carol like movies and tv shows and whatever that i've seen um scrooge always came across as just a hard ass right and he didn't have at least to start with it was just like that you saw what you get that's what you get that's who he is with this character cross it felt like from the beginning he was this kind of layered broken figure who didn't really know who he is uh was struggling with the fact that he's as angry as he is like there was always that element of there's definitely someone else under this this front um which is very different to the interpretations of like a christmas cow scrooge that i've seen previously like previously i could say he just comes across as a hard ass who doesn't care and it really takes a lot to break him down to that level whereas cross seems to sort of start off in this kind of wobbly place and he could just tip over the edge and i think that was kind of an interesting choice and take and i think it lent something to bill murray's performance to sort of play it with uh like having those neuroses already there and it was something for him to play off when he started getting like dropped into the visions and stuff so i enjoyed that i enjoyed his performance i enjoyed that take but overall i think it's fun um i think it is flawed in quite a few ways like i say i think the, the the rambling just pace of it took a while for certain things to settle in for me and like i wasn't quite sure towards like the sort of the end of the second act going into the third like where um like cross was emotionally i didn't know like if it, has he learned anything is he still just kind of rambling does he like i get the point of the character is that he can't find himself but it's i don't know it was it was just kind of a stumbling block to get over for me that sort of how they were telling that part of the story but otherwise i think it's enjoyable i think it's fun and you know it's absolutely a christmas movie that i would i you know i'd recommend if you like bill murray if you enjoy just 80s movies in general i think this is a pretty solid one i think it's one i would have to re-watch though but for it to really click with me a little bit i feel like i was constantly trying to keep up with certain elements of this one and like what what are they doing here i don't know <laughs> i don't know if it's working or not um so i think a rewatch for me would probably be beneficial at some stage and uh maybe it will all sort of click in a little better with me but i recommend checking it out for yourselves if you've not seen it before it's got some fun stuff in there i liked all the sort of ghosts and the shenanigans they got into and you know bill murray's fun to watch as always so yeah i fully recommend scrooged if you've not seen it before go check it out for yourselves um i think it's flawed but fun is the ultimate end point i would go out for this one thank you for watching this video guys if you enjoyed it please hit the thumbs up button it helps me know you enjoyed this video and it helps to get seen by more people maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos 
including next week's final Christmas movie for this year. It's a doozy that people will not believe that I've not seen before, but I promise you I've not seen it. But yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.